The history of life on Earth is a long, complicated story. Over time, groups of animals have been able to evolve into every form imaginable. Life first evolved in the ocean, or perhaps in pools of water on the surface. It then expanded and conquered the ocean. It wasn't until about 430 million years ago that plant life first inched its way onto land. Other invertebrates were able to walk on land earlier during this time, but only for a short period. Life could have been on land earlier, but as you can imagine, evidence from this time is very rare. Tiktaalik is a famous fossil of one of the first vertebrates with terrestrial adaptations. It lived around 375 million years ago during the Devonian period. During this time, free-sporing vascular plants began to spread across dry land. This created extensive forests which covered the continents. Various terrestrial arthropods also became well established. This blooming ecosystem provided a home for the new kid on the block, terrestrial vertebrates. Tiktaalik was still a primitive animal. Its limbs were poorly adapted to life on land, and it was still reliant on the water. Importantly, its traits allowed it to escape the competitive ecosystem of the Devonian seas. This is what made the land so enticing, a get away from all of the dominant animals and enter a new world of opportunity. Much like the first Europeans coming to the new world, Land would go on to become a main theater for life and eventually birth the ape right in this video right now. But the question of this video is why would life go back into the water? It took millions of years to evolve traits such as lungs and limbs. Why sacrifice all that work just to return? Well that is because evolution does not have a reason or a meaning behind it other than survival until the next generation. Because of this, the force of evolution does not care that an animal spent 200 million years becoming terrestrial, just to spend another 100 million years evolving to be aquatic again. Still, the question is not answered. What reason would let a terrestrial animal even be successful in the water? After all, sharks and various other fish have lived in the ocean for hundreds of millions of years. They are adapted very well to survival in their domain. How could some lumbering land animal just come in and run the show? That question is actually very hard to answer. I will provide a few examples, but keep in mind there are many terrestrial animals that transitioned into marine environments that I won't mention, and there is not only one reason these animals were successful. One of the first successful groups of terrestrial animals to transition into the seas was the ichthyosaurs. They are not dinosaurs, but marine reptiles. The first ichthyosaurs appeared 248 million years ago at the beginning of the Triassic period. This timing is important. The Triassic followed one of the worst extinctions in Earth's history, the end Permian mass extinction. 96% of life was killed during this event. Animals of large size or very specialized animals are usually the first to go during extinctions. This would leave many ecological niches open for the taking. This is most likely what allowed ichthyosaurs to become aquatic predators. The competition on land was fierce. Exploring this new niche would be a good way of exploiting the rich sources of marine food. During this time, we see other animals also transition to the ocean. Another group closely related to the ichthyosaurs called the Hupasukians took to the seas. They were less successful and only lasted a few million years. They show us that it is not easy to just transition, and some failed. Ichthyosaurs had a number of adaptations that gave them advantages. For one, they gave live birth a trait rare in modern reptiles but still seen in modern boas, rattlesnakes, and garter snakes. Other adaptations included a relatively large size and powerful jaws. It would still take them millions of years to evolve fully aquatic and dominant forms. Not only were they effective in the water, 
They appeared at just the right time, otherwise they might have never had the opportunity to become aquatic. During the Mesozoic, they were also the Mosasaurs and Plesiosaurs among a handful of other animals that became aquatic. The reason for their transition to marine environments is unknown. The Plesiosaurs first appeared at the beginning of the end Triassic mass extinction. This could have accounted for some of their excess, but they were still thriving before the hit. Mosasaurs first appeared about 100 million years ago. There seems to be no large geological event that can explain their success, but this should not be looked at as odd. Terrestrial vertebrates do not need a mass extinction to become marine animals, but the opening of niches certainly helps. Another interesting group to look at is the Spinosaurids. Spinosaurids are a group encompassing 13 known genera. All of the animals seem to have a skull adapted to eating fish. They have a crocodile-like snout, but it was found the skull is much more similar to a pike conger eel. The convergence is uncanny. Anyways, why this group is interesting is, of course, because we can see they were adapting to an aquatic lifestyle. Many know that Spinosaurus is at least somewhat aquatic, but the discovery of the tail is undeniable it spent a lot of time in the water. Keep in mind there are still studies coming out saying that it didn't hunt down prey in the water like commonly depicted and it may have spent its time more like a heron. They were not the only dinosaurs with this trend either. There are even dromaeosaurs that had aquatic features. Hal's Curaraptor is a genus of waterfowl-like dromaeosaurid dinosaur. It seems terrestrial vertebrates just can't stop evolving into aquatic forms. Rather than mass extinctions being the main culprit, it is likely competition itself is. Being the apex predator on land is not easy. So many factors could cause extinction, and especially over the long term. It is much easier to hunt in calm rivers or even take on the ocean. After all, why should we be surprised? Vertebrates have taken flight numerous times in history. Avian dinosaurs, pterosaurs, and bats. This niche is much harder to evolve than going back into the water, yet it has happened across different groups multiple times. I am still waiting for an even more aquatic Spinosaurus relative to be found. That would make my day. Anyways, we don't talk about terrestrial vertebrates turning into marine animals without mentioning whales. The first whales, also known as cetaceans, appeared when the earth was recovering from the extinction that killed the dinosaurs. Pachycetus is among the earliest known cetaceans, appearing about 56 million years ago. They were typical land animals with long skulls and large carnivorous teeth. We would see the descendants of this animal become more and more aquatic. Ambulocetus is an example of a more aquatic form. It still had functional legs and a terrestrial-like tail. It was similar to an otter in form, using its legs for propulsion. The next step in whale evolution was a decrease in leg size and the emergence of the tail as the main form of propulsion. Tails are able to use more of the body's muscles and reduce drag while moving through the water. The animal Duridon shows us an even more aquatic form. This animal was completely aquatic. This whole transition from land predator to marine monster teaches us a few important things about our question. It shows us that these animals were able to thrive even before becoming entirely aquatic. Ambulocetus was still able to walk on land and perhaps even take advantage of land resources, all the while maintaining an aquatic lifestyle. It seems a question of why do terrestrial vertebrates keep evolving into aquatic forms totally looks over the fact that it is very beneficial to be semi-aquatic. Semi-aquatic animals have a unique privilege similar to that of flying animals. They have two different worlds which they can enter at ease. If a predator is chasing them in the ocean, simply beat yourself on the shore. This privilege can be seen in seals when they escape killer whales by going onto land. Semi-aquatic forms are not only the gateway for becoming fully aquatic, but are themselves very effective niches to inhabit. But a question I still haven't answered is what physical trait makes these animals better than their fish counterparts? Terrestrial animals have evolutionary advantages over fish. 
This is because they are subject to vastly different evolutionary pressures. All the time they spent evolving their terrestrial traits let them have unique abilities. These abilities are not the same for each group that transition. For example, cetaceans had big brains, but ichthyosaurs did not. Other important traits include live birth, strong jaws, and the ability to directly breathe oxygen. Water has a very low saturation point for oxygen. Fish must have large and elaborate gill structures to get this oxygen. This puts some limits on fish intelligence and abilities to thrive. A study on the cost of large brains in fish looks deeper into this topic. It subjected a population of guppies to strong artificial selection to favor the evolution of much larger brains. It was rather successful and the fish rapidly evolved larger brains. It was found that evolution of larger brains leads to smaller guts and 19% lower number of offspring. This is because brains require a lot more oxygen. The other thing that requires a lot of oxygen is digestion. When forcing these fish to evolve large brains, they sacrifice arguably more important traits. Outside of forced lab tests, fish do not generally have the pressure to evolve large complex brains. Oxygen and energy is much better spent on reproduction. The point of all this is that fish, the primary vertebrate inhabitants of the ocean, are inherently handicapped. Handicapped by basic physics, ancestral morphology, and inability to control some of the apex niches in their environments. This has allowed other creatures with arguably more advanced traits to periodically dominate fish. But what does dominate even mean? In terms of number of individuals or total biomass, the fish totally dominate marine mammals and reptiles. But in terms of the top of the ecosystem or largest individuals, air-breathing vertebrates have historically taken the apex niches in these environments. The large apex fish still exist and have throughout history. Sharks, a type of cartilaginous fish, have been extremely successful and have produced one of the biggest and deadliest aquatic predators of all time. So perhaps the question proposed in this video is completely irrelevant to begin with. Modern marine animals do not dominate the ocean. Most are constricted to niche roles, but you'd be hard pressed to say they don't have it good. This whole topic has provided me with a new understanding of evolutionary forces, especially concerning how evolution does not have a goal in mind. It does not want to develop intelligence and it sure does not care if you are a predator or a prey. It was also interesting to find out that some animals can just be inherently handicapped by their environment and evolution. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I have been meaning to make a video about this question for a really long time, only to find out the question is kind of meaningless. Anyways, it would be great if you could subscribe to the channel. I have a lot of other videos like this and even full length documentaries. If that sounds interesting, go watch some of my other videos. This has been your host, Northo2, and I'll see you later. Bye.